But look at this, a whole new option from this route. Um, well, here's the thing. I'm kind of thinking that whenever we do with Monica, the good way we won't start on Sayori's route, so we can, like, we can kind of get, like, the whole experience that way. But anyway, um... Hmm... I'm gonna apologize for now, and then we're gonna go back in line. <laughs> I sigh to myself. I might as well man up and apologize. Sayori, I'm sorry. It was wrong if we had acted in such a way, and I promise you, I love you and only you. That was just a... mistake. I promise it won't happen again. Sayori lets out a pain to sigh before putting on a smile. It's alright, Helly. I forgive you. You should stick to seeing Monica, you cheating jerk. Come on, let's not keep the others waiting. Is that, is that all that comes of it? Let's lie right now. <laughs> I don't want Sayori to get the wrong idea about Monica and I. I try to come up with an excuse off the fly. Monica was trying to help me. She saw that my tie was messed up and she was trying to fix it up for me. It was that, and only that, I promise. Sierra lets out a heavy, pained sigh before putting on a smile. That's alright, Helly. I'm just glad she's being a good friend to you. I'm totally not jealous or anything like that. Come on, let's not keep you guys waiting. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work out good either way, so... I'm fine with leaving it at. I wouldn't mind baking cupcakes again. Turns out Helly isn't that bad of a cook. She says that directly looking at me. Noski certainly isn't letting what just happened between me and Monica go. I try to move past the sudden awkwardness. Siori once again shoots me the same quizzical glance she gave me yesterday when Natsuki brought up the time we spent together last Sunday. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to resolve all this and tell Natsuki that I'm with Sayori, as well as tell Sayori everything that happened between me and Natsuki on Sunday. Hopefully that will put her mind to rest. Thankfully, Monica comes in to seemingly save the situation. Same here. I'll give you them at tomorrow's meeting, Holly. I think I got mine with me. Let me check. Natsuki searches through her bag and retrieves a small stack of papers. Here you go. That should be everything. Natsuki hands me her poems. Thanks, Natsuki. Okay, everyone. You all know what to do. That concludes today's meeting. Be sure to find your poems and give them to Hallie. On the way back home, Siori barely says anything, let alone even look at me. But when she does, she usually looks or shoots me an irritated or disappointed look. I completely screwed up. I shouldn't have gotten so close to Monica like that. I feel even worse for lying to Siori about it. I'm not even sure if she really believed me. For all I know, Siori might even be thinking right now that I'm about to ditch her for Monica, because I am. Knowing how she is right now, I just probably made things worse for her. Maybe I can still fix this. Hey, Howling. Y yeah I'm half expecting her to bring up what happened. I think I know where my balls are, so if you want, I can still fight later. In my constant state of worriedness since the club, I almost forgot about the poems. Oh yeah, that'll be fine. I'll see you later then, right? Yeah, yeah sure. Alright. I'll see you in a bit. Sari walks to her house and shuts the door behind her. She didn't give me her usual hug. Well, hopefully I can fix things with Sari when she comes over. I drop my book bag and I can skip a little bit. Guess Monica was right. I am getting better. I can't help but think back to the last poem I wrote. Monica. I guess all her motivation finally rubbed off on me. Maybe I was trying to impress her the whole time. I put down my poems and go to my bag to retrieve Natsuki's poems, which I put right next to mine. I noticed that in Natsuki's stack of poems, there's a pink piece of paper. Hmm, I don't remember Natsuki ever writing her poems down on pink paper. Maybe she accidentally gave me something. Before I could investigate further, I hear my doorbell ring. And then Siori came in. It's been a while since we got to spend a lot of time together. I, I've definitely got more than a few ideas in mind. Shush, phone. Quiet. Siori shoots me a disapproving look. Show me what, Holly? Didn't you already get your chance to do that with Monica earlier? It's bad enough that we haven't gotten to spend much time together in the club lately. But this? I feel my heart sink into my stomach as I feel the guilt from earlier return. Sorry, I... I saw what happened, Holly. I didn't really want to say anything because I didn't want to cause problems back there. But why did you lie to me, Holly? How could you do that to me? It seems like I have no way out of this. I might as well man up now and tell her the truth. I didn't want you to get the wrong idea about what happened to Sayori. How could I not? I'm shocked by Sayori's shouting. She rarely raises her voice like that. These past few days, I feel like you've been completely ignoring me. I haven't. Why would you think that? Yesterday you spent all your time with Monica. And today you were like that with Monica. <laughs> Even as I was dealing with my rain clouds again. What's going on here, Hallie? D did I do something wrong? Do you not want me around anymore? Sayori, don't 
be like that. You know that isn't true. Look, to tell you the truth, I didn't go up to Monica to be with her like that. That was all her, I swear. I didn't know what to do. I blanked out. And that was wrong for me to do that to you. I'm sorry. I was wrong to lie about this to you. I was wrong not to say anything to Monica, and I just hope you can forgive me in spite of everything. I know I don't deserve it, but you're my girlfriend, and I love you, and I stupidly thought lying to you was the right choice. It won't happen again. That I can promise you. Siri takes a deep sigh before turning back to me. Okay, I forgive you, but it better not happen again. It won't. Siri shoots me a gentle smile. I guess we'll sort out everything else with Monica later. Just come here, Zoe. It's about time I get my turn with you. You don't need to tell me twice. Siri and I spend what feels like hours tightly embracing each other in my living room. I feel awful for treating Siri the way I have been lately. I chose her. Dang it. Out of the other three. I can't be having second thoughts or trying to back out now. Sure you can. I love her. We've always been there for each other. I care about her and she cares about me. I want her to be happy like how she wants me to be happy. I need to make this up to her. Hey, Sayori. Yeah. Yeah. Mario Kart. I remembered that there was something in Natsuki's stack that stood out to me. After comparing all three stacks, I see Siori's stack is completely identical to mine. Natsuki's stack is the only one that has a pink piece of paper. I began to look through Natsuki's stack. As I looked through her poems, I can't help but be reminded of the first time we shared. I always found joy in reading her poems. They're so simple, yet they're just as hard-hitting as Monica's Siori's and Yuri's. Not to mention, I always found her word choice to be cute and adorable. It really does suit her, even if she won't admit it. Through my train of thought, one of the pieces of paper escapes my grip. I put the poems on my desk and bend down to grab the stray paper. I look at the title. I don't remember reading this one. Dun dun. And then make sure I got that bar. Okay. My day with you. My day with you is perfect. It's true. You and I preparing sweets. Who could have known I'd be swept off my feet? Baking with you broke down my walls. I just hope I wasn't the only one to fall. Ever since that day, I felt a connection. I can't hide anymore. This is my confession. I love you. More than hearts can say. All thanks to our special day. Love, Natsuki. Uh-oh. I put the bone back in the stack, put on my pajamas, and lay down er, on my bed. Do I tell Sayori? No! I open my eyes to find myself in a dark, empty space. What? I quickly get up and look around. I see nothing but darkness for what must be miles on end. My only source of light are tiny white dots that are scattered across the horizon. Wait a minute, am I in space? B but I can breathe. Things are actually going well for once. A familiar voice echoes throughout the oblivion. oblivion. That voice, it's back again. Why? You're doing a good job so far. This is perfect. Well, almost perfect. That little toothpick slot letter does make things a little more complicated than they need to be. But I don't think it'll matter too much. And another thing, stop spending so much time around that helpless moron. In fact, don't tell her anything. Keep your mouth shut. The more you tell her, the greater chance she'll realize what this world truly is. And it'll make what I need to do needlessly more difficult. I didn't want to intervene when you were talking with Sayori earlier, but you really left me no choice. The only collateral damage was that I had to redirect you to another governor version of your conversation with Sayori. Which did result in a bit of a minor setback for our plans, but nothing that can't be fixed later. If I could just get rid of Sayori right now, this would be so much easier. We don't need her, she's useless. She's dumb enough to believe that people actually want her around. <laughs> But I know you won't mess up our progress for those losers. And I almost thought my backup plan wasn't going to work. I just can't wait to be in your arms and... <clears throat> Sorry, I shouldn't get too ahead of myself. All good things come with patience. Mm -hmm. I can't, wa can't wait for tomorrow. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep spending time with me and I'll be all yours in no time. Until next time. My love. I gasped for air and propped myself up quickly. What was that? I feel a chill rack my entire body as I shiver violently. Why am I so cold? It's not like I keep my room freezing. Am I sick? I clutch my forehead to check if I'm coming down with a fever. No, and the rest of me feels fine. What's going on with me? After a few minutes, I stop shivering and look at the clock. Great, I don't have to be up for another hour. Well, I can try falling back asleep. But if I do, 
Won't that voice still be there? If this keeps happening, I'm probably going to need a psychiatrist. Maybe I'm actually starting to go crazy. I don't feel like getting out of bed yet, so I just spend the rest of my time staring at the ceiling. Though the memories of my dreams slowly creep back into my mind. What does it want with me? And what the hell does it mean by keep doing what you're doing? I don't even know what I'm doing! Well, now we can skip. And Yuri probably won't be of much help either. Oh well. Oh, reluctantly, we, uh, d don't tell her. Yeah, I didn't think that one was going to be different anyway. Hi, Monica. Hitting up on the roof and stuff. I'm happy with Sayori. I wouldn't want to ruin what we have. But you haven't been spending a lot of time around Sayori in the club lately. I haven't been trying to avoid her or anything. I've just wanted to get to know the others a little bit better. I don't see the harm in that. Yeah, there's really no harm in getting to know the others. I didn't think Sayori would keep you all to herself. Ah, it's not like that at all, really. I'm just kidding, Allie, don't worry. Still, though, I'm really glad that we've got to spend some time together lately. Yeah, me too. Though, to be honest, I wasn't expecting us to be like that yesterday. You did catch me by surprise. Yeah, me neither. It just kind of happened. It felt nice being with you like that. I mean, I liked it too, but it might be better if we don't do that again. Well, I like being your friend, but for now, that's really all I can admit to. It's fine, Allie. On the bright side, your tie seems to be looking presentable today. Yeah, I guess it does. We managed to share a small laugh before the reality of the situation returns. So, what was Siri's reaction to seeing us like that? She didn't really bring anything up with me when I had the her class with her earlier. Well, we both know Siri isn't the confrontational type, but yeah, she wasn't too happy with what she saw. Well, what did you tell her? Well, I was an idiot and lied about what happened to her. One, because I light up with curiosity. Oh, what do you mean? I made up some excuse about what happened, but I ended up apologizing to her about lying and about what happened. Allie, I'm surprised at you. Yeah, I'm not really proud of it. I understand, Allie. You do? You did something you're not proud of, and you tried to justify it. We do it all the time. And it's more my fault than yours anyways. So don't beat yourself up over it too much. Alright. Yeah, it's kind of the same. I can walk you back to your class if you'd like, Hallie. The world around me goes into a freeze frame. She's actually willing to walk me back? Come on, Hallie, don't blow this. Oh, well, uh, sure. You seem surprised. Well, I wasn't expecting you to ask me, and I'd hate to make you late to your own class. I'll be fine, Hallie, don't worry. Well, okay. Great, come on, let's go. I timidly follow Monica out of the cafeteria. No, I want to turn her down, stop! <laughs> fine. And I've only just gotten to know her a little more recently. Well, is she really all that inter interested in me? Yeah, I got hers yesterday. I just need your poem and Yuri's. Oh, her is yesterday. Who should I hang out with? I mean, we're still on her out, even if we we're going to blow it sky high. I guess talking to Monica some more wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Monica is at the teacher's desk, but she isn't on the computer like she normally is. Instead, she's looking down at her iPod and humming a tune to herself. Intrigued, I carefully approach her, not wanting to startle her. Hey, Monica. She quickly looks up at me, popping out one of her, ear her AirPods. Oh, hey, Hallie. I take it you want to listen to what I've been working on. Monica flashes her usual wink. I mean, hey, if you think it'd help. Besides, I'm sure your music is awesome. Monica smiles bashfully. Well, it's not finished yet. I've been listening to these samples I've done all day trying to figure out how to make the next verse. Chord progressions are more complicated than you would expect. So you're working on your own song then? Yep. It's the reason I started playing the piano. I've always wanted to make my own song since I was really young. But lately I haven't had much time to work on it. A lot of things have been coming up recently. I take it was that surprise you had for someone. Monica nods. And how's that going? Pretty well, actually. I think I'll be able to show them my surprise on Friday. Funny enough, what I'm working on is tied into my surprise. That's awesome, Monica. You really are a jack of all trades, aren't you? Aw, oh, Hallie. Monica grins at me. I just strive to be the best I can be. Well, you're definitely succeeding. Well, if that's the case, maybe I can show you what I've been basing my song off of. How much of the song is done? I'd say that the first verse is pretty much done at this point. 
I was thinking that the second verse could go something like this. Monica hands me one of her AirPods. Well, I'm not sure if I'm be the best go-to person for music advice, but I guess I could give it a listen. That'd be awesome, Allie. I pull up a chair and sit right next to her. So I take it this is a piano track? Yep, right now it's just going to be a piano solo. Alright. Monica hits the play button on her iPod. Huh, that was actually pretty good. You think you can actually make a full version of that? Well, with some more practice, I think I can pull it off. Do you want to take a crack at it now? Monica's eyes widen at my suggestion. I mean, it's fine if you don't want to. No, it's not that. It's just that I've never played it in front of anyone before. I've only played it by myself. Well, it'd probably help for you to play it in front of someone first, wouldn't it? Monica pauses to think. I mean, you already pulled off what I just listened to, so I'm sure I'll love your entire song. Uh, okay. Let's do it. I hand Monica back her AirPod as she uh, pops the other one out. We can use the piano in the band room. The band doesn't meet on Wednesdays, so nobody should be in there right now. Wednesday is. Alright, lead the way. Monica smiles as she leads me out the door and into the hallway. As we're walking towards the music wing, I can't help but tell that Monica seems a little apprehensive. Well, she did say that she's never played in front of anyone before. If I was in her shoes, I'd probably be a nervous wreck. But Monica has done a lot of incredible things before. She's won so many gymnastic and debate trophies for the school these last two years, not to mention all the writing competitions she's won. It wouldn't surprise me if she's drowning in college offers. I can only imagine just how hard she's worked to get herself there. Anybody would want to be like her. And it's a no-brainer for why every guy wants to be with her. Well, here we are. Monica stops in front of the band room. Huh, so this is the band room? You've never been inside before? Can't say I have. Well, this definitely, uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be a special day for you, huh? Wait, no, this is just this. Monica opens the door and flicks on the lights as we enter the band room. Well, uh, I don't think I've seen so many different instruments before. I almost want to pick one up and try playing something, but I'd rather not make a fool of myself in front of Monica. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, it really is. I definitely need some or need to visit this place again sometime. In the corner of the room by the window, I see a grand piano lined against the wall. So that's where you've been practicing. Yep, I get a pretty nice view of the courtyard from here as well. I find that the view is very er, pretty inspiring. I see. We both turn to face the piano. Well, here I go. She quietly makes her way towards the piano and sits down. I pull up a chair and sit right next, right across from Monica. She takes a deep breath as her fingers hover over the keys as she looks on at me. You got this, Monica. Monica lets out a small laugh. Thanks, Allie. Monica cracks her knuckle, her, her knuckles, letting out one more breath before positioning her fingers above the keys. A split second later, she begins playing. Oh, I think it's automatic right now. I can't help but notice how elegantly her fingers grace the keys. The melody is calm, but purposeful. Every action with intent and care. It's almost hypnotizing. Unexpectedly, Monica starts to sing. Every day, I imagine a future where I can be with you. In my hand is a pen that will write a poem of me and you. Not even ten seconds in and I'm already blown away. Her voice is almost angelic, as her emerald eyes, yeah, her emerald green eyes light up with a fiery passion that I've never seen before. Monica takes a brief look over at me, smiling before she goes back to focusing on the piano. Statement of question. 